So now that this in-depth Sydney community is really starting to grow, uh, more of you are starting to ask questions in the comments. So I'd really like this channel to become a platform for discussion about cinematography and filmmaking in general, as there are so many people out there looking to learn as well as people with experience willing to share their knowledge. So today I'll answer a couple of questions that you've posted, and if anyone out there would like to provide their insights or would like to ask more questions or comments to be addressed in a future video, please post in the comment section below. So let's get started with the first question. So the first question from Akin is, have you ever made a short film or video using nothing but an iPhone? What gear or software would a team need to have to get some decent looking sequences with a phone and on a budget? So no, I've never made a film on an iPhone or a phone, although I have made many shorts and even a feature, which I made a previous video about, using consumer DSLR cameras. Personally, I prefer using cheap DSLRs for low budget filmmaking over using phones because it gives you access to using different lenses and manual control over your camera settings and focus. You can also find some DSLRs for less than what an iPhone actually costs, so it's definitely something to consider. One of my biggest takeaways though from shooting projects in this way is that rather than trying to improve upon the medium and make the footage look like it was shot on a professional cinema camera, I tend to go the other way and embrace the fact that it looks like an iPhone or a cheap DSLR. If you look at a South African feature shot on an iPhone like High Fantasy or Tangerine for example, they're never trying to hide the fact that they shot it on a phone. They visually embrace the low dynamic range, exposure shifts, and wide lenses of the iPhone. If you want to find out about specific software or gear, I'd suggest doing some research on Tangerine. But more important than that, I'd focus on the basics. What does elevate the so-called production value of those films is the sound and the lighting. So make sure that you record the best sound that you can, light the shots in a continuous style throughout the film, and embrace the look of phone video rather than trying to make it look higher end than it actually is, because then you'll just be fighting a losing battle. Moving on, Nishani asks, how do you find out the technical details of each movie? So it depends on the movie, but generally through a combination of online articles, interviews, and looking at behind the scenes footage or photos. Some sites I regularly use are American Cinematographer, Kodak's Motion Picture Blog, uh, Cook Optex TV and Ari YouTube videos, and British Cinematographer. I always link the sources I use in the description, so if you're interested in finding out more about the DOPs or films, that's a good starting point. Then to break down specific scenes or shots, I'll try to find some BTS photos of the gear, which I can identify based on my knowledge from working in the film industry. Generally speaking, this is easier to do with more modern movies, as there are more resources available online now than ever before. Next, Laura asks, are you going to expand this to other departments working on set? Because the base of my knowledge is in cinematography and particularly the camera department, that's usually most of what I focus on for now. I do try and touch a little bit on other aspects of filmmaking and departments through the lens of cinematography in my videos, but going forward I'll try to include more information on other aspects of filmmaking. Also, if there's anyone out there with knowledge about these movies from the perspective of other departments, I'd love to hear it in the comment section. And finally, can you share your knowledge on the relationship between light sources and the color or look they generate? So this is quite an in-depth topic which I'll cover in more detail in a future video, but I'll try to give a basic rundown of three common light fixtures. Uh, I'm no expert on lighting, so if there are any electricians out there that can provide more info or correct me, that'd be great. Tungsten lights have a color temperature of around 3200 Kelvin, which means that they appear warmer. Usually tungsten lights are powerful and quite directional, so they're great as a hard light source or can be softened by bouncing or diffusing them to achieve a higher output of soft light. HMIs are also strong direct light sources but have a cooler daylight color temperature. They are often used to replicate the look of sunlight. LEDs are lower power fixtures which can be singular color like daylight, bicolor, tungsten or daylight, or RGB, any color you like. They are easily dimmable, tend to be a bit softer and have a lower output than tungsten or HMI lights, although now that LED technology is rapidly improving, this isn't necessarily the case anymore. So thanks everyone for your questions, and if you guys enjoy these more informal videos, I'll try to make them alongside my regular content in the future. 
As I mentioned before, if you'd like a chance for your questions about filmmaking, cinematography or the channel to be featured, please comment below and I'll try to get around to answering them in an upcoming video. As always, thanks for watching and goodbye.